Hi guys, my name's Emily and I teach biology here at the Dublin Academy and I just got my hands on today's paper. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled with it, a really nice fair paper with lots of choice for students. So if we take um, a quick run through it, we start with section A, so our short questions and we have to answer any five questions here. So when students open the paper, we see food straight away, um, which removes any shocks from initially when we, when we open the paper. So, Question 1a, the three um, elements present in carbohydrates, we're then asked for the general formula um, for carbohydrates. So that's one I heard on about in day school, so we should be thrilled um, with that one. The smallest unit of our carbohydrate, D then we're asked when these uh, smaller units combine, what do they form? E um, might cause a little bit of difficulty for some people, the structural role of uh, carbohydrates in living organisms. So where are they found? And then F, uh, an accessible question to all students, one dietary source of carbohydrates um, in humans' diet. If we flip then to question two, we're looking at scientific methods. So this is a nice question because students should have met this early on in fifth year. Um, in part A, we're asked to um, add a vertical line to the graph to indicate um, the, the pH would, would be best suitable for the germination of seeds. Part B then, we're looking at the definition of a hypothesis. So again, a nice straightforward definition that we met early on in fifth year. D then as well, we're looking at the definition of a control. and um, So something that you really expect to be on your, your paper. Part E then, where might we first publish the results of research? So a scientific journal and then F2 limitations of the scientific method. So maybe something that students might overlook. So something like the extent of our knowledge or accidental discoveries. Question three then, um, we're looking at the human skeleton, we're asked questions like the functions of the skeleton, bones of the axial skeleton, and the biomolecule that's the, the main component of cartilage. So a nice straightforward skeleton questions with some uh, trickier areas in there um, as well. Question four then, we're looking at DNA. So a really, really nice DNA question for students. What does DNA stand for? The type of bonding that's present? Um, Question E might cause a little bit of difficulty. We need to know the type of base, so whether it's going to be a purine or a pyrimidine. Um, F, an organelle in eukaryotic cells, but again, students have some, some um, element of they should be able to hazard a guess at that one, so choose an organelle um, if you're unsure there. And then G, the base present in RNA that is not present in DNA, so nice straightforward DNA questions. Question five then, um, we see a bacteria question. We're asked again, nice straightforward questions. Um, the, the three shapes of bacteria and we're asked to identify which one is in the diagram. Um, we're asked to describe how bacteria reproduce asexually. One factor that will affect the growth of bacteria like pH or temperature, one harmful bacteria. And then we're given our pH or our bacteria growth curve. So this is a question that we might expect to see in a longer question, but again, students um, should have seen this in um, past exam papers um, time and time again. We're asked then to indicate the name of stage Z, so a nice straightforward bacteria question. Question six then, we have a mix of different topics and we're asked to give brief biological explanations. Um, we're asked part A, a question on ecology, and um, B is ecology, C we're looking at sexual reproduction in plants, D we're looking at excretion, E we're looking at bacteria, so why are antibiotics not used to treat um, viral infections, F we're looking at meiosis um, and then G we're looking at the heart. So a nice mix of questions um, which gives students um, a nice opportunity to display their, their knowledge. Question seven then, so we're still on the short questions, we have photosynthesis. So we actually um, have had a question with a graph similar to this um, in past papers. We're asked to identify the colour of light that's absorbed um, most by chlorophyll A. So we can pull that from our graph um, from part A. Um, question C, we have named another molecule which can provide electrons during photosynthesis. Um, D, the source of that molecule, and E, why horticulturists might use um, carbon dioxide enrichment in a greenhouse. So a really nice photosynthesis question and the graph um, will enable students, I suppose, to get a little head start on, on that question. Section B then, um, I have my experiment question, so I want to answer two out of these um, three questions for 15%. Um, absolutely thrilled with the experiment questions. Um, question eight, I'm looking at ecology and we're asked to um, write down the term that describes each of the following. So the part of the earth where life can exist and living factors that can have an effect on an ecosystem. So a really nice question there. 
part B then we're asked to identify the, the apparatus and then in BI to give the quantitative survey of plants. So the wording of that question um, might throw some students the word quantitative. So quantitative and the number um, of, of the plants. So we'd use the quadrant there. Okay, question nine then, really, really happy with this one. This is one that I put on my mocks uh, for the day school here um, at the academy. So I had this topic um, on my six year mock. Um, so if we look here at nine AI, um, again, a definition, what is meant by the term anaerobic. So um, N in anaerobic, how we remember that is no oxygen is going to be required for that respiration. II, the substance produced in animal cells as a result of anaerobic respiration. So we'll have lactic acid buildup. BI then, we're looking at the investigation to prepare alcohol using the yeast and to show its presence. So the first thing the examiner asks here for is the diagram. So students would really want to know their experiment to be able to draw this um, diagram out. II then explain the importance of keeping the yeast cells at an optimum temperature. So optimum temperature, we want to relay that back to our enzymes. III, alcohol production eventually stops. IV, how do you know when the reaction has stopped? So we've met all of these questions in our in our past papers. And then part V, I suppose the, the part that I would classify as, as H1, H2, name the test for alcohol and give the final cover colour um, that's going to be observed. So that last little part V might be the, the trickiest part of that question. Question 10 then, I'm looking at a mix of different experiments. It starts off with my definitions of asepsis and sterile. So we need to know the difference between both of those. My first experiment is the growth of leaf yeast using agar plates. Um, my second question, dissect and display the um, sheep's heart. My third one is the effect of IA on plant tissue. And finally, um, one which I'd actually mentioned to my six years yesterday, the transverse section of a dicot stem. So a really, really nice question there with a mix. And again, an opportunity for students to um, display their knowledge. Um, I suppose if anybody left out one of those experiments, you will be limited to your choice and have to go back to your ecology or respiration, but a really fair um, set of experiment questions uh, for students. If we look at section C then, so our long questions, question 11, I have ecology. So for 2.25% of the start of question 11, um, I have three definitions. Part B then, um, the examiner links this in with a, a comprehension style question and I'm asked to um, sketch a pyramid of numbers. So I suppose that's uh, something that students will have to have um, a very solid, accurate answer for there for part IV. Part C, thrilled with this, um, the nitrogen and carbon cycle. So I again was harking on to my day school students about the, the nitrogen cycle. So that part C is worth 6%. So again, you'd want to be able to mention the types of bacteria and the name of the process that those bacteria are involved um, in. Question 12 then, we start off with a really nice definition. Metabolism is the reaction catabolic or anabolic and explain. So this links back in with my enzymes. Part B then, respiration. So this is something that, that might cause difficulty for some students, but it is a, again, a fair question. Um, and I'm given a diagram to, to go with it. Part C then, enzymes we expect to see on the paper um, every year, and the enzyme question is nice, straightforward. I think a very basic um, enzyme question with part IV may be causing a little bit more difficulty for, for students. Question 13 then, we have um, our genetics question. No real surprises here um, at all. Part A, nice and straightforward, the famous scientist um, who is the father of genetics and then state your law of segregation. Um, so that definition will be, will be rigid in terms of what the examiner is looking for. Part B then, we're talking about hemochromatosis as an inherited um, condition. I'm asked for two definitions for gene and recessive. I'm then asked to work out a cross based on hemochromatosis. Um, part C then, really, really happy with this one. Um, spent a lot of time in it on in day school. I am um, our sex linked crosses, so we're looking at haemophilia. So students want to have a nice method that they can follow here to work back um, and link it in with this cross. So a really nice question, um, I suppose, with no real surprises for students. Question 14 then, we're looking at back to our plants. So 14 AI, what is Mary stem? So another um, keyword that I heard on about in day school. So um, I suppose H1 there for, for a H1 question for students, what is the Mary stem? So that's going to be the, the areas of growth where mitosis is carried out. Um, part B then, we're looking at an animal pollinated flower and we're given a diagram to label. 
IV then are longer question describe embryo sac development in detail so that's one that students um, will need a very solid answer for there with their, with their keywords. Part C then vegetative propagation so a nice end to the the plants question for, for students. If I flip on down to question 15 so another question that we focused on in day school uh, human reproduction so really really happy to see this on our paper and um, we have some definitions here we have a diagram of the male reproductive system so students should be fine with that um, and then part C so again was on our prediction list for um, day school of the female hormones so uh, we're given a graph and we're, we're asked questions to write on the different effects of the hormones and the days when they're, they're present so a nice I suppose a fair question but one that students will have to have studied it in detail to um, attempt that part C on the female hormones Question 16 um, and 17 then I have some choice within so if students left out one topic they might be able to um, still answer one of these questions with their, their other topics. So 16a I'm looking at osmosis and um, I'd imagine some students will veer away from this one because the examiner did use um, numbers and grams per centimetres cubed um, but we're given a graph we have seen a question similar to this um, before in terms of the, the percentage mass and it changing. Part B then genetic engineering so um, that was on my list for my day school students so really really happy with um, my genetic engineering question and then part C we have viruses and part D we have fungi um, and in the fungi question we're asked to to draw the rhizopus so that diagram there is definitely one that I'd classify as a H1 and students um, would want to be able to uh, describe it in detail and we're actually given the labels so we're given the labels um, stolon, rhizide and sporangium. Question 17 then um, part A so the endocrine system so really really happy with this and um, visited this topic many times in day school with my students and um, I was convinced it would come up and really really happy to see it on the paper so for seven and a half um, percent um, I have my hormonal system and um, there's no surprises in this question so students who study this should be really um, happy with it and content and um, leaving their exam. Part B then I have my nervous system so this is a um, I suppose a system that students might find a little bit more difficult. Part V I'm looking at describing in detail how that nervous impulse and um, travels between the two neurons so that is going to be um, a longer bullet style question and then VII, a really nice question, describe one possible treatment for either um, of the following nervous system disorders, paralysis or Parkinson's, so that should pull some students um, along. Part C then, I have um, the human circulatory and breathing systems linked in together, so part one, um, part I, sorry, one, um, I'm asked to name the veins that best describe the description, so students would want to know keywords here like pulmonary, hepatic, renal, um, and there's very little room I suppose for, for guessing here so students want to really understand how their circulatory system is linked in with um, their um, breathing system. Part II I'm asked to draw the structure of the alveolus and its associated blood supply so I'd want to show the capillaries um, and I'm asked to indicate the overall directions in which the oxygen and carbon dioxide are moving so oxygen moving into the alveoli and carbon dioxide and um, getting exhaled. In III then I'm asked to distinguish between two diagrams and tell the examiner which one is inhalation um, and why so during inhalation my ribs are going to move up and out and the diaphragm move down and the examiner has given us uh, little arrows here to indicate that. Part D then I'm looking at a plant's question and we're looking at the various tissues in the plant so the plant organ, the tissues, a uh, function of those tissues and then part VI draw a label a draw and label a longitudinal section of either type of vascular tissue so within part D um, the longitudinal section diagram might be the one that students find the most difficult there so you can choose your, your xylem or your phloem. So overall a really really nice paper really happy with it I think students um, had lots of choice and should feel content if they answered um, their, their best questions on the day so well done guys and good luck with the rest of the exams.